Hi, my name is Foley and welcome back to the Semi Extreme One Chunk series. To recap last episode, I completed the Outer Fortis Farms chunk. I proceeded to roll the Sunset Coast as my new chunk and that gave me access to an axe. This chunk also has charter ships in it granted me a chance to roll a new chunk anywhere a charter ship can take me. After that, I rolled two free chunks and then officially took my first step off of Arlamore, getting to the Musa Point docks in Karamja as my new one. This chunk has the smithing cape in it, but since it's not an accessible part of my chunk, it's not a task for now. The Musa Point docks was another free chunk, so after rolling again, I ended up getting the Port Serum docks. This was another free chunk, but it means that I'm potentially one chunk away from access to the smithing cape forementioned. Ending off the episode with rolling the River Farla Fork Chunk, giving me a curved bone grind through the mossy giants that are located there. But before we get into it, shout out to all my channel members listed here on screen who got to watch the video a few days early. Thank you for the extra support you all give me, it does not go unnoticed and I greatly appreciate it. Also, did you know that 80% of you aren't subscribed? I'm trying to reach 5,000 subs by the end of the year, so if you're enjoying the videos and a part of that 80%, hit the button. It's free and it helps out a ton. And one last thing. Thank you for watching. Now, before we get into the chunk, I talked briefly about Piro Piro in the last video and I read the comments. All of them. It seems that you all don't like Piro one bit, and I get that. But let me give you some insight that I should have mentioned before. It totally passed over my head in the last video, but I will not be doing Piro Piro until 89 Hunter. At the moment, I have a Hunter activity that I can unlock at 65, Sunlight Moss. These Draboas over here only require level 39 Hunter, but I don't have the Eagle's Peak quest done to unlock box traps. Also, I'm one chunk roll away from having access to Pyrofoxes that require level 57. So at worst, I'll be in Piro Piro to level 65 and at best 57. That's only 200 to 450,000 XP in Piro Piro. I appreciate the feedback of doing Piro and keep the stuff or don't do it at all, but Piro isn't about the loot for me. It's only a means of getting the Hunter level prereqs so I can engage with the Hunter activities in Varlamore. Not to mention access to the Hunter's Guild as a whole. So I'm sticking with my plan. 450k XP is just a drop in the pot to the 5.4 million XP I'll be getting through the activities in Varlamore to unlock the Moonlight Antelopes in the Hunter Guild basement. With that being said, the poll results are in and the majority voted yes to keep Clue Scrolls from Piro Piro. So that is what I shall do. Alright, now that that is all cleared up, let's get into the new chunk. The River Varla Fork. This place is kinda hidden in the shadows, tucked away in the corner of a map for only a few eyes to gander at. I mean, most regular accounts would look at this area on the map and think there wasn't anything to it, but look at this place. It's absolutely beautiful. Mind and earth rune spawn to pick up to your heart's content. Great for an account like this with limited access to runes. Oh, and the best part of this chunk, the mossy giants. Look at them. Whoever designed this gets an A plus from me. I think they've turned into my favorite monster design in an instant. But besides their looks, they do bring a few tasks, but in all reality, it's only one. I say this because you are very likely to get the rest of the task done going for this one item the curved bone. With a drop rate of 1 in 5013, it is not a grind to be taken lightly. This could take hundreds of hours to get given the stats and gear I'm working with, but other than that, obtaining the long bone and the mossy key at a rate of 1 in 400 and 1 in 150 respectively is kind of a guaranteed when going for the long bow. But I can also get some new best in slot items from the mossy giants, the black shield being my best in slot ranged and melee shield, and the magic staff. This magic staff is huge for the account, being the first weapon that lets me autocast spells. This will come in very handy in the future when I do magic training. They also drop plenty of other items like the steel med helm, mithril sword and spear, and the steel kite shield that I will be taking to the general store to sell for GP. Various types of runes, herbs and seeds, iron and steel arrows, and as well as steel bars and coal, which I will be hoarding for later use. Although I do have the ability to flinch the mossy giants like I did with the bandits, doing so will take far longer than just face tanking them. With them having 60 hit points and a max hit of 6, I don't think I'm ready to face them on this way just yet. So I'd like to introduce you to the sand crabs that I unlocked in episode 2. My new AFK slash editing activity. Training off them will be essential to giving myself the boost that I need in order to face these giants head on. But with that being said, I will see you guys done when I'm editing. So we are now base 50 on melee stats and hit points. So we can finally try out these moss giants. Should be a lot better than the stats that I was working with at the beginning. So the first kill's not going too bad. We only lost, what, 11 HP? Bro, that's a great first kill. Rain our seed? We like that. Level 20 prayer. Oh, level 60 combat. Yeah, 14 kill trip. Actually a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. A lot better. Oh, 
<laughs> the freaking long bone. Oh my god. How many was that? 40 moss giants? Okay. Spooned. <laughs> yeah, you're goddamn right. I'm spooned. Oh, the black square shield. Next kill count. Oh my god. We are gaming now. Oh my god. We're, we're streaking. We're streaking. We're streaking. Yeah, we got our black square shield now. So we're like absolutely best in slot right now. We're cracked. Hey, level 21 prayer. Hey, there is the mossy key. One less item for us to get here at the Mosh Giants. All we need to do, we still haven't gotten a magic staff yet, which is kind of surprising to me. But we've killed 91 Mosh Giants so far, and we just need the magic staff and the elusive curved bone. All right, I ran out of food, so here's me cooking some more corn, and I just so happened to get another cooking level. Look at that, level 68 cooking. Got a dunce random event while getting some more corn, and I'm going to put this right into agility for now. I believe that will be level 3 agility. Yes, sir, it is. Would you look at that? So I wanted to test out like a full efficient hour of like cooking these corn. So I picked up all the corn and took them to the bank. And then I went over to this oven over to the uh, to the side of me. And I just started drop cooking all of them instead of like, you know, cooking them and then taking them to the bank. And I ended up getting like 180k cooking XP an hour, which is pretty freaking amazing, honestly. But yeah, we got like a little over 700 sweet corn so we can go back to the mossy giants with a lot of food. There is the magic staff, the last item we were looking for besides the curved bone. So it's just grinding from here, getting lots of levels, lots of loot. But right, here's what our stats are looking at now. We're at 58 uh, strength, 56 defense, and almost 53 attack. I'm gonna do attack until I hit 53, and then we're gonna keep on going with strength. And there is longbone number two of the grind. We got that at kill count 239. Oh my Jesus. Evil Bob random event. Let's see what fishing level we end up getting to with this. Looks like level 10 fishing. We're almost at level 11 now. Longbone number three at kill count 480. All right, so I got a little bit of loot stacked up. This is all the loot I'm gonna be selling. Just these items from the grinds, but I got a little bit saved up. I'm gonna get some gold in order to buy some better food for now because the corn is only healing me six hit points per at the moment. So I'm gonna sell all these items in order to get better food to have longer trips. I think that might be worth it. If you're wondering, I do have a helmet shop over here, but the steel med helm is selling for the same price as you can see 120 120 yes yeah, so i'm just gonna sell everything at the same shop and we'll get this money and then we'll buy some fish and bank it all right that was the last world hop we got 15,000 gp from that um and that was from almost 500 moss giant kills we also do have a little bit of cash in the bank that we can spend on the fish okay so i think the best move for us is going to be the raw bass to buy they cost 40 gp each and they heal 13 hit points the tuna costs the same amount as the bass but they only heal 10 and then the raw cod costs 10 coins but they only heal 8 so the raw cod is pretty cost efficient but they only heal two more HP than the corn does, whereas the bass is going to heal us seven hit points more. In each inventory, I can get another 196 hit points with this raw bass compared to the tuna, which is actually pretty big and can lengthen our trip significantly, I believe. So, yep, we're just going to go ahead and world hop and buy all the bass that we can and cook them, bank them, and repeat the process. Now, the only downside about bass is that I do have a chance to burn them, whereas with the tuna, I do not have a chance to burn them. So, I have an 87.89% chance to 
successfully cook them. So I think that's pretty good odds, only burning about 10% of them. So I'm still going to go with the raw bass at the end of the day. If I'm going to spend my money, I'm going to spend it on the on the big boy food. I would buy raw lobster or swordfish, but my burn rates on them are much lower than the bass. And they also cost 70 coins for the lobster and 80 coins for the swordfish. And I don't think the extra couple hit points is really worth it compared to the bass. But let's go ahead and buy a bunch of bass. <laughs> there, there, there's a, there's the funny number. Level 69 cooking. <laughs> all right, I spent a majority of my money and we got all the bass cooked now. Let's see how much we got. Looks like we have a little over 500 bass, so this should last us quite a while. If we go the full 5,000, it will definitely not last us that long, but it will last us a good little bit. And I only burned a, like close to 70, so I don't think that's all too bad, honestly. Oh, you look, there's a level 70 cooking. I'm making some more sweet corn so I can have something to eat while I bank. So I'm not eating bass at the bank, you know, wasting my good food while I'm banking. I want to use the good food while I'm at the Moss Giants, you know what I'm saying? Another long bone. All right. We are definitely spooned on long bones. That is four and 488. <laughs> I've actually just thought about it. I've had more long bones than I've had mossy giant keys. Just two to four. <laughs> hey, level 30 prayer. Would you look at that? Level 69 combat. Nice. You love to see it. The heck is this guy doing here what the fuck what are you doing in my swamp phoenix crossbow this freaking guy what huh wait what i'm so confused right now how did i how was i able to pick that up a shield of era what because it's from soa oh um it's oh it's smuggling onto irons yeah i don't know how i feel about that though i don't know I don't know how I feel about that i mean i'll keep it in the bank but i'm not sure if i ever want to use it i don't know kind of feels wrong to me Hey, level 31 prayer. There we go. Mr. Moss Giant. Your ass is grass. And I'm the lawnmower. Looks more dirt than grass. Yeah, you're right. Hold up. Maybe we can fix that. Okay. All right. All right, Moss Giant. <laughs> Your ass is grass. And I'm the lawnmower. What'd you say about grass now there, son? This actually looks good with low detail off. Oh, yo, dude. Thank you for the bot. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I'm going to do this evil Bob event, though. I need I need the fishing XP. Oh, no, my big bone. No, my big bone. Oh, this ain't even... Oh, man, this ain't even... I lost a big bone for this fucking thing. Jesus Christ. It was supposed to be... It was supposed to be fishing XP. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Is my Is my bone still there? Is my bone still there? Bone! Bone! Give me the bone! Hog. Okay. Four grimy snapdragons. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Oh! Oh! Oh, no way. There's no way. No, there's no way. What? <laughs> 961 kill count. Oh my god, that's stupid. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. There is the curved bone oh my god we were spooned well that feels really that, that feels uh that feels crazy oh is sun, is sun chunk here yeah sun chunk yeah thank you sun chunk thank you oh but all right let's put all the stuff in the bank we can put the curved bone right here with the the special loot tab so yeah we ended up getting one curved bone the mossy keys or long bones we also got ourselves the best in slot black square shield, the magic staff, and I believe that was all the chunk asked for. Yeah, that that looks like it is it. So um, we got all of our best in slot stuff, and I think we are ready to roll a new chunk. 
But all right, let's go over some chunks here. Number 11 is the only new chunk that I'm able to roll. This has a magic trees in them, which would give me an 87 fletching, a 75 wood cutting, and a 75 fire making task, which uh, could potentially be a very long chunk. Number eight, the Rollo's Rise. This is gonna give us a crafting task, but most importantly, it gives us a prayer method, which is a uh, really good since I wasn't able to get the 43 prayer off of the Mossy Giants. Number nine has nothing relevant. Number one, we have an 82 farming task to grow a grimy torso. Number two is essentially a free chunk. Number four, the Bazaar. This is gonna give us a crafting task that is gonna take a long time to do but most importantly it gives us our new best money maker through the wealthy citizens over there i can also get easy clues from them so maybe i could finish an easy clue while thieving them we also get access to a gem stall over here which would be really good for making any type of jewelry once i get access to a furnace and the molds number five is a free chunk but it does have a shop there that has a rune mace in it so that would give us a new best in slot weapon number three would give us nothing for now but it would give us access to the pyre foxes for hunter they are available at level 57 so whenever i go into puro puro it would only be until level 57 if i got this chunk instead of 65 for the sunlight moss number 10 has a teak tree that i can cut as well as a uh, tree patch that i can plant teaks or mahoganies at but i don't think i have access to either of those seeds right now but the teak tree would be useful in the future if i ever come along a construction grind number seven is a nothing chunk then we can go over here to port serum and musa point number six is a fishing grind i will get access to a low level fishing spot so that would automatically unlock level 76 fishing for me and to have to catch a big shark and to cook a big shark so it'd be 76 fishing minimum and 80 cooking and then number 12 the one i'm worrying about the most uh, port serum this would give me access to the smithing cape but the smithing cape will not be a task unless i have access to a furnace i do not have the rule check to where super heat is a viable training method so i'm pretty much just waiting for a furnace and then 99 smithing will be unlocked so at the moment i'd say the one i want the least is port serum but uh, any other chunk I could really go for right now. I would say number one would be a chunk that I didn't want, but um, I'm doing farming passively. It's not going to stop me from progressing um, in my chunks. It's going to be a passive task, but it's going to be a priority passive task. So it's something I'm always going to be, I'm going to be doing constantly and working towards that goal. So let's just go ahead and get into the roll. <laughs> Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh my god, it is Port Serum. Take me there. The Port Serum docks offers many new types of shops that I didn't have before. The best one being the Magic Store, where I can buy a variety of runes given that I have the GP. Which brings up the first task, casting high level alchemy. My rules for magic are set to only utility spells, so that is why it's not requiring me to get a higher level to cast Fire Blast and Tangle or anything like that. There's also a Battle Axe shop giving me a new task of equipping the Adamant Battle Axe, a food store that sells of various ingredients most importantly the potatoes to make a tuna potato whenever i can get my hands on some butter and a jewelry store that has zero stock so i can't buy anything from here but i can sell jewelry that i make here in the future there's also willow trees here so 30 wood cutting and 30 fire making to cut and burn a willow log as well as fletching a new best in slot magic shield the willow shield a bit overlooked when discussing the chunks but i do have access to the rest of the musa point chunks where the smithing cape is and there's actually a low level fishing spot there and with that comes getting level 76 fishing to catch a shark i also have to catch a big bass at a rate of 1 in 1000 a big swordfish at a rate of 1 in 2500 and a big shark at a rate of 1 in 5 5,000 along with 80 cooking to cook a shark. Bass are caught through big net fishing where you can catch items along with fish giving me two best in slot items, the leather boots and the leather gloves. Having access to the rest of the Musa Point chunk allows entry into the Asgarnia Ice Dungeon, where there are a few more best in slot items for me. The Ice Giant offers four of those items being the Mithril Mace, my best in slot prayer weapon, the Mithril Square Shield, my best in slot range shield, the Iron Plate Legs, my best in slot melee legs, and the Black Kite Shield, my best in slot melee shield. All have in the drop rate of 1 in 128, besides the Black Kite Shield being a 1 in 25. The last best in slot item comes from Pirates, being the Iron Plate Body, my best in slot melee body, dropping at a rate of 1 in 128 as well. 
This chunk also gives me my first quest and diary task. For quests, I have to do the first step of Pirate's Treasure and up to the third step for Skippy and the Mogers. For diaries, a foul or easy task to claim a security book from the security guard upstairs at the Port Sarum Jail and a Karamja easy task to travel to Port Sarum via the dock east of Musa Point. That's a lot of tasks to do. But before we get into them, let's talk hypotheticals. What if I had to get the smithing cape with only superheat? I would like to call this segment meme mass. To get started, I have access to one beginner clue step. I also have access to goblins in this chunk that I could kill. They drop a beginner clue at a rate of 1 in 64. This means to complete a beginner clue on average, I would have to kill roughly 7,100 goblins to get three of the same clue steps in order to guarantee myself a casket. Now, why am I talking about beginner caskets? Well, it's because they dropped the fire staff, an essential item for a super heat grind, saving me millions upon millions of GP just by getting that one item. But it has a drop rate of 1 in 44 from these beginner caskets, and with these caskets given an average of 2 reward rolls per, that would make it a 1 in 22 to get this item every casket I open. So what if I hit the drop rate for that? Well, that would mean I would have to kill roughly 156,000 goblins on average to get the 22 beginner caskets to hit the drop rate, even more if I went dry. Alright, so let's say I get the fire staff. Nature runes would be next, right? My best source of nature runes is ice warriors, dropping them four at a time at a rate of 1 in 12.8. That's not bad at all, but how many do I need? Well, every iron bar you smell and then smith equates to 37.5 XP. So if we take that and divide it by the amount of XP needed to get to 99 smithing, it comes out to roughly 347,585 iron bars that I would need to get to 99 smithing, meaning I would need the same amount of nature runes to superheat all the iron ore into bars. So how many ice warriors? Warriors would I need to kill to get that many nature runes? Well, every three kills we get would net us an average of one nature rune. So if we take that three to one ratio, we can assume it would take us about three times the amount of nature runes that we would need in ice warrior kills, coming out to 1,042,755 ice warriors that I would have to kill. Okay, so I know how many ice warriors I have to kill now, but how would I kill them? Well, the best way is with fire spells since they are weak to that element, giving me a bonus in accuracy and damage. I have access to the magic shop now, so rune isn't the problem, it's the money. But before I know how much money I would need, I would need to know how many runes I need first. With Fire Strike costing 2 air and 1 mind rune and no fire runes because we are assuming that I have a fire staff, and having a max hit of 16 and basically a 100% accuracy against them, an average kill would end up costing 16 air runes and 8 mind runes. If we take those numbers and multiply it by the amount of ice warriors we need to kill, it would come out to a total of 16,681,000 and 200 air runes and 8,340,600 mind runes that I would need for the entirety of the grind. Mind and air rune packs contain 100 runes each and both cost 340 GP. Taking the total amount of runes needed and dividing it by 100 gives us how many rune packs we would need to buy of each and multiplying that by the cost of packs gives us a total amount of GP needed for all the runes, coming out to a total of 85,074,120 GP to be able to buy all the runes necessary for the grind. Now, that's a lot of money, especially for a one chunk account, but what's my best money maker? My best money maker is fletching willow longbows and selling them to the general store. Selling 5 per world hop nets me 270 GP, meaning each longbow gives me 54 GP. So if we take the total amount needed by that 54 GP, I would need to fletch and sell 1,500,000. 575,447 willow longbows to have enough GP to do so. Not to mention the 315,000 world hops I would have to do as well while I sell them. So let's say I get the fire staff and all the money for the runes. How long would it take to kill the ice warriors? Well, on average, it's going to take about 25 seconds to kill one. So at maximum efficiency, losing zero ticks along the way, it would take me 301.7 days playing time to kill that many ice warriors. 301 days just to kill them. Not to mention all the time it would take to do all the previous steps, and I didn't even mention about the time it would take to mine all the iron ore as well. It's safe to say that I can throw this into the meme grind category, but what if I told you there was one item that could theoretically save me thousands of hours compared to this grind? Located in the chunk that made it possible for me to get here is an anvil, and right next to it, an iron bar spawn. This takes out all of the needs to get the fire staff, the money, runes, and all the ice warrior kills. There's just a few problems with it. Each iron bar smith equates to 25 XP, so I would have to pick up roughly 
521,000 of the same iron bar spawn to reach the goal of 99 smithing. Doesn't sound bad until you realize you have to world hop for them one to one. 521,000 world hops. Looking at it from an outside view, it's bad, but definitely doable until you get hit with the too many login attempt screen. This happens around your 500th world hop if you are hopping nearly instant from getting into a world like this method would entail. My calculations suggest that it would happen around the one and a half to two hour mark of hopping worlds constantly. After you get hit with the too many login attempt screen, you have two options. Go on the Jagex official client slash mobile and continue, or wait the roughly four hour cooldown before you can get all your world hops back. So roughly 500 iron bars equates to 12,500 XP. 12,500 XP that you would get in that hour and a half to two with a cooldown of four hours, meaning you could only do this about four times a day if you were to do this method right when your cooldown was up, giving you a max of 50,000 smithing XP you could gain per day with this method. But let's be real, doing it two times a day max is way more ideal. So 25K XP a day. Taking that and divide it by the amount of XP needed for 99 would mean you would have to do this for 521 days in a row to get the 99 smithing but only requiring around four hours of your time every day four hours by 521 days would equal a 2084 hour or 86.8 days grind all time gated of course on one hand the aforementioned method would take much longer to complete but it would be something you could work towards constantly and on the other hand is one severely time gated given you don't go on the jagex official client if I had to pick one, it would be the iron bar spawn just because of the time gate aspect, giving me less of a chance to burn out. I do it until I got hit with the limit and simply log off or find something else to do in the meantime. But the iron bar spawn method can be thrown into the meme grind category as well. Both of these methods will not give me any tasks to do, but that doesn't mean I can't use these methods to train smithing, specifically the iron bar spawn. I'll discuss more about it if slash when it comes up, but... I must wrap up on this segment of meme math. I hope you enjoyed all the nerdy numbers because it was fun doing the calculations for them. But that's going to do it for me for this episode. We got a lot to tackle in this next chunk. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to see if you are subscribed. It helps out the channel a lot. And shout out to all my channel members again listed on screen. Thank you so much for the further support you give me. My name is Foley, and I will see you all on the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.